Hello, I'm Gordon Ritchie with Cole Morgan, and this is Two Minutes of Motion. Often, we find ourselves working on a piece of machinery with very little information about the machine, such as the inertia. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the inertia from a step move. To do this, we will need to be able to capture the change in velocity and current over time. For this demonstration, we are using a two-stage compliance demo and inertia wheels have been added randomly. The reflected inertia, the inertia that the motor sees at the shaft, will be calculated separately to confirm or disprove our findings. The units within Workbench have been set up for the compliance demo. Position will be based on the position of the compliance demo's second stage. A motion task move has been created to quickly move one revolution. The acceleration is set very high to ensure peak torque will be required during acceleration. To simplify the test, Digital Input 1 has been set up to trigger the move. The test can be repeated with each new trigger. The scope is set up to capture current, velocity commanded, and velocity feedback. The record time is set high enough to capture the acceleration up to the constant velocity or, for a triangular profile, the point where the motor starts to decelerate. We have set the scope to trigger off of the motion task. Since the move is in the positive direction, the slope is set to positive. The scope is armed and the motion triggered. From the scope plot, we can gather the key elements for calculating the inertia of the system. You may have noticed that when we gathered our data, we didn't use all of the data. When you're working with a linear acceleration, you can grab a portion of the data and you'll get the same answer as if you grab a larger portion of the data or if you grab all of the data. From our data, we found that velocity is equal to 570 RPM, or another way of saying that is 9.5 RPS. Our acceleration is our velocity divided by our time. So we have our 9.5 revolutions per second divided by our time of 20.188 milliseconds. This gives us an acceleration of 470 revolutions per second per second. Our angular acceleration is just the XL times 2 pi. In this case, our acceleration comes out to be 2,955 radians per second squared. Our torque peak is equal to the current peak during acceleration times our case of T of the motor. In this case, it is 6.223 amps times a case of T of 0.3 Newton meters per amp RMS. This gives us a peak torque of 1.867 Newton meters. The equation we're going to use is our basic equation for figuring out the peak torque of a system, which is peak torque is equal to angular acceleration times the total inertia of the system. Keep in mind that this total inertia includes the inertia of the motor as well. In our case, we're going to find peak torque divided by our angular acceleration minus the inertia of the motor, and that will give us the inertia of the load. In this case, our peak torque is 1.8 Newton meters, and it'll be divided by our angular acceleration of 2,955 radians per second squared. From this, we're going to subtract the inertia of the motor and what is left is the inertia of the system. J sub L divided by J sub M 
will then give us the inertia ratio of the system, which is 58 to 1. To check the results, calculations were done old school using a calculator, graph paper, and a pot of coffee, as well as motioneering sizing software. While the hand calculations delivered a result of 60 to 1, allowing for rounding up, motioneering returned a 58.8 to 1 inertia ratio. There are a few provisos to using this method. First, you must have control over the system, and it must be stable. Also, systems with poor mechanics, such as excessive backlash, will provide very poor data, making the calculations difficult or even impossible to complete. It is best to try this method with a known system until you are comfortable enough to try it with a real-world system. I'm Gordon Ritchie for Two Minutes of Motion. Watch for our next exciting video.